Hey, folks, in this interview, a little something special for you. I have the distinct pleasure and honor of sitting down with artist Steve Richard. This is Twitter. Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of This Week in Photo. I'm your host, Frederick Van Johnson. Today I'm joined by artist Steve Richard. Steve and I are going to talk about his motivations for his art, his, a little bit about his process and his view on just sort of the artistic community and the photographic community. Steve and I have had conversations offline and have talked a little bit about where his mind sits in this stuff. And I'll tell you, um, having conversations with Steve have, have adjusted the way that I look at photography in many ways, and hopefully it will impact you as well. Steve Richard, welcome to the show. How's it going? It's going great, and thanks very much for, uh, for taking some time to chat with me. I really, really appreciate it. Looking forward to I, it. I am looking forward to this too. And, and you know, typically before I start these, these interviews, I ask the person that I'm interviewing, you know, how do you want me to refer to you when I do the introduction? Is it photographer? Is it artist? Is it digital storyteller? Is it, you know, God of all these survey? You know, <laughs> what's what's the and you said artist. Very few people just say just call me an artist. You know, what, can you talk about that a little bit? Why why mm -hmm. artist? And then we'll get into we'll yeah. get into a little bit of your background. Okay, this this may ramble on a bit, but. It's funny because I, I am I you know I certainly started out as a photographer and and I used to love photography, and and still do love looking at photography. But uh, I really have a hard time trying to define the work I create, as uh, especially I, I work as you probably know, uh, Frederick. You know, with ninety nine percent fine art nudes to use this mm -hmm. this photography term. And I, and I really hate the term because if you go search that, which I don't recommend, uh, it produces a, a pretty big pile of shit. And, um, and, I, and I started to realize um, photography versus art has really been interesting and, and something I think about a lot and, and, and work with a lot. And, and it dawned on me uh, a while ago that I, I'm actually not really interested in photography anymore. And meaning that photography when I first started, it was really about capturing images, going out and, if you wish, documenting things. And, and I used to love it a lot, but I started moving into creating images, creating stories, if you wish, creating moments that were really more about me and what's in my head and what I wanted to say. And, and I had a hard time trying to find uh, a way to say, well, this is kind of like being a fine art photographer, but but being a fine art photographer still didn't really do it for me. And I thought, well, really what I am is I'm, I'm an artist that uses a camera. And, and I love looking at photography, but I'm, I'm really not a photographer. I, I'm not really interested in going out down the street with my camera or even going into the studio and, and, and you know, documenting things or, or, or capturing things. I'm really just interested in creating these moments or these stories that are really, in fact, about me or about my ideals, my ideas. So, and, and um, how do you how do you, how do you reconcile that for for you know the millions of photographers that are out there that that call themselves photographer and embrace that? Are they is it is it a, a journey that the the photographers are sort of on this path from you know the 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 seduction of the gear and the art form. And ultimately, they'll, you know, maybe start becoming more about the art than the pixels and the whiz bang and the software and all that. Should, should it well, be a trajectory like that? I, well, I, only it should be for me and was and is. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I think it's so personal. Uh, in fact, there's, there's, in my opinion, there's nothing wrong with being a photographer. In fact, photographer is great. I just fell out of love with being a photographer in a way. And, uh, and I, though I still love looking at really great photography, I'm not interested in what most of the time makes up the definition of a photographer. And, and I think some people could juggle both very well. Some people are really good artists and really good photographers and, and, uh, and walk the line in between them. And some people never leave the photography world. And, you know, even though they do certainly work that's artistic, I don't want to make, you know, it's, it's kind of a gray area, but mm -hmm. they approach, they approach it from the photographer side. And once again, there's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's, you know, crossing over into a very specific 
um, artist focus, I think is, is, is very personal and, and unique. And um, so I'm not sure that it's a journey that everybody takes or everybody wants to take whatsoever. Yeah. I don't know if that yeah, answers your question, but yeah. And it, and it, it depends, right? You know, I was having a conversation earlier today with a software, with someone from a software company, one of the larger software companies uh, in the industry, and we were having a conversation about AI, right? And we had one of these, a similar conversation at one of our Twit member mixers previously. And the the conversation centered around this this controversy that that artificial intelligence or those applying those sorts of technologies to your images. Uh, some people think it's dishonest and then other people think it's, you know, hey, my pixels, you know, <laughs> my, I can do what I want to do with my pixels. My pixels, my choice. Right. So, you know, we yeah, I know, you know, you're as we talk about we're moving to talking about your process and your work a little bit. I'm curious as to where you fall on that, because. You know, a lot of photographers say, you know, I'm I'm a purist. You know, I only I only mess with f stops and shutter speeds, and I get it on the negative. If I don't get it on the negative, it ain't happening. You know, and then on the other side, there are photographers that say, you know what, the the like uh, like our friend Renee Robin, you know, will capture elements of the final piece and not attempt to capture it all in one frame. It's all about capturing pieces of a final work that then get executed or presented or orchestrated in the computer. Where do you, where do you fall on that? I mean, is it, I know there's probably no one right answer to that, but which, which direction do you lean in? Okay. Well, first, well, there is, there is only one right answer, of course, and that's for, for each person. Um, mm -hmm. And, and for me, uh, I fall into the, uh, I, you know, once again, so from an artist's perspective, I, I fall into, uh, I don't like to do any post-production. I certainly wouldn't let um, any decisions be made by AI or any other process. And, and maybe, maybe, cause, uh, maybe it's easier to describe it this way. Um, for me, the difference, you know, one of the main things that, that define an artist is the word intent. And for me, you have to have intent. If, if I look at, for example, a painter or a sculptor, um, you know, every kind of brushstroke or every chisel mark or every, everything that happens on that piece of art is done with intent, even though some of it may be somewhat, in a way, random, but it still has this intent behind it. So for me, that's the number one thing is, is it has to be uh, it has to be with intent. Every decision has to be with intent. And I, I would find it very difficult to, to use any type of AI or, or non-controllable system, uh, anything that even has some sort of randomness to it uh, on any of my work, because then it would remove that intent, and, and I probably wouldn't feel like I had it much to do with it. Um, so that's, that's number one the, for me. The, the second part of whether, uh, you know, for, me, for uh, I, I just despise post-production. I, I don't have any enjoyment sitting in front of a computer. Mm -hmm. I love getting it right in camera. And getting it right, I mean, for me, getting it right. So, you, so I, I do everything to get it in camera, whether it's film. And, of course, in the last 15 years or so, I've been shooting digital. But it's still... I, I get it in the shot, and if I can't get it in that shot, I won't accept the image. But the irony is, for example, you mentioned Renee, and, and we're, we're, I actually look at Renee as, an, as another artist. She's, she, um, she does a lot of post-production. But the irony is we both go after the exact same thing. We're both after creating this uh, unique image um, that's ours, that tells our story that, that is about us. She just does it a much different way than I do. And, you know, so she'll spend, uh, you know, 100 hours in post-production and 20 minutes shooting it. And I'll spend, you know, 100 hours getting it right, shooting it, setting it up. And, and tw if I do 20 minutes post-production, that just annoys the shit out of me. I'd like two <laughs> minutes is, uh, is way more than I'd like to do. So for me, it really, it, the process, so there's, there's really two parts. There's the process. Um, which I think is is individual, but it, I think if you go back to Renee and I again, you'll, I think we both apply the same intent to our work. So everything that's in 
Renee's image is with her intent, or, or at least most of it. And I'm speaking for her. I don't, you know, I haven't asked her this question, or, or I might have, I don't remember. But, um, but, I, but I'm pretty sure that most artists uh, put a great deal of intent in their work. And, and that's probably the thing for me that, that is the defining, not, not the process, not the actual whether you use AI or not AI or you use, you know, post-production filters. Or, uh, to me, that's just personal. And, 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 I, and I probably choose the extreme one-sidedness of, of avoiding any type of post-production uh, possible. Yeah, that's interesting. See, the one of, one of the things that we, one, of, one of our previous conversations, one of the things you said that continues to haunt me to this day, Steve Richard, is you were talking about the, um, uh, you, you said, I'm paraphrasing, but you said something to the degree of, you know, anyone can take a photo of a pretty person. Um, but then you have to, does, is it just a pretty person if you were to swap that, that person out for, uh, an average or unattractive person, is it still a great photo photograph? Right, and that right. stuck with me. Cause now I look at, that's the one, that's why that haunts me. Cause now I look at photos all over the place and I'm looking at these photos and I'm like, is that a great photo? You know, is it, is it, is, it, is it, that, a, is it art? Is it a work of art or is it just a. <laughs> capturing yeah. a beautiful person that was blessed I'll, with I'll, genetics <laughs> and, and and i'll give you the i'll give you my my mantra my quote and, and it's funny because anybody who's ever assisted for me they they probably would throw up if they heard me say this because they hear me say it about 400 times a day but but i have this mantra that really goes it it's it's easy to take a picture of a beautiful thing it's really difficult to take a beautiful picture and it's even more difficult to realize the difference and you can replace beautiful with any anything powerful you know exceptional does it, it really in a way doesn't matter but most people um go around and take pictures of ex exceptional things and and call it an exceptional photograph and sometimes it is sometimes that that photograph of an exceptional thing is an exceptional photograph but that's not the measure there, there you know correlation and causality aren't necessarily the same thing here. Right. And so, um, and, and I think for me, that's always been a measure, especially when you shoot beautiful things. So for example, I work with, with human bodies and, and, and if you think the human body is beautiful, it's pretty easy to look at a photograph of, you know, a, a nude male body that, that has an exceptional build and, and think, Oh, what a, what a great photograph. And for me, the test is, no, do I feel anything looking at this? Do I, does this bring any moment, any memory, any, any emotional response? And if, if it doesn't, then I'm pretty sure I probably just documented a, a beautiful thing, but I didn't necessarily create anything beautiful. Yeah. I don't know if that makes yeah. sense, but that's, but that's kind of this mantra that I've been using for a very, very long time. And, and I weigh it against every single, uh, every single thing I create, I, I use this measure. So I love that. it's, yeah. it's one of, yeah, it's one of the, you know, my kind of toolbox, uh, my main, my main tool in the toolbox. And now, you know, it's now you're, you're, there's a, a little Steve Richard on my shoulder all the time <laughs> talking. That's, that's, my... a, ugh, that's creepy. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of people yeah. on my shoulder. I would, so I... <laughs> I would smush that right now. Yeah, you know, I hear voices. <laughs> um, you know, I want to talk a little bit about uh, world building and, and intent. So right. we, when looking at your work, and, you know, of course, I'll link to your, your galleries and show some of your images um, in the blog post for this episode. But, you know, you, you, you speak of photographing with intent and being meticulous about the, the, the production process versus the post-production process. Are you building in your head kind of like a, like a Marvel Cinematic Universe, you know, a Steve Richard, <laughs> Richard universe where you have little vignettes of characters in that world that you then have to you know, yep. capture in certain situations? Is that, is, or is it more serendipitous? It's, it's both. And it's good. This is a really long answer to your question. Good, but, good. So I'm yeah. going to do it in, in a couple parts. Um, so there's what I call a fundamental set of rules I use. And then each series I, I work on has its own set of rules, um, its own universe, if you wish. So I don't, I don't necessarily call it a universe. I call it 
um, I call it in this set of rules. I, I, I describe something that I, that I refer to as a personal dogma. So this is a set of rules that I apply to everything I create, and and I apply them so rigidly I won't allow anything through that doesn't meet this set of rules. So, for example, um, perfect body line is one of the things that's that's really important to me, and perfect dance body line, if you wish. So, if you look at any of my images, you'll always see that the feet are pointed in a certain way. All the lines are really always drawing you back one way or another to the story, where the story's happening. Um, I really like uh, darkness with a sense of beauty. I, I, I like, for the most part, a sense of anonymity. Um, so there's this whole set of things that I, I call a personal dogma that's, that's global. I apply to everything. And then if I'm working on a particular series, um, for example, say, uh, say the uh, Obscuro, this, this series that we shot underwater, it has um, uh, a few more laws of physics, if you wish, a few more rules. And, and I create what I call a stage. So it's not really a universe. I create kind of a stage or a persona for the, for the series. And then everything has to fit in that persona. So what I don't do is I, I usually don't have a I don't have a storyboard. Um, you know, I might have an idea of what the mood is and what the moment is I'm trying to create. But I but on the day of the shoot, other than the lighting, which I've usually worked out and the basic form and the basic shape and story, then I create the image with everybody on set and we start working bit at a time, meticulously, slowly and and it might take me a couple of days to get a final image. But most of the time, the final idea is iterative and the story um, forms that way. But the universe isn't that well. The universe is really, excuse me, the universe is really this set of uh, rules, this personal dogma. And, and uh, like I said, it depends on the, the series itself. What does, does that, like that kind of get to where you're the does. question? Yeah, okay, that yeah. does. Yeah, no, absolutely. Instead of being explicit about, you know, this is this universe and these are these characters in the universe and let's move them around yeah. and put them like this. It's it, like you said, it's it's like uh, in the world of 3D, you know, computer graphics, you, you define a set of rules um, that you know, the gravity is like this or the wind is like that and the lights from right. over here and it's of this color. And then you put stuff in that world and then, you know, it behaves it's exact, it's exact, explicitly it behaves pertaining to those rules. Right. And when it, and when it doesn't fit, if it looks, the neat thing about having this such rigid dogma like this, it's, it's really easy to edit because if it doesn't fit, it's, it just yells and screams at you. Mm -hmm. So, um, for example, um, every time we shoot a series and usually a series takes three to, three to 10 years or whatever, it depends. So it, it develops its own voice. You know, I wrap this set of dogma around the particular series. And then, for example, I go back to Obscuro. You know, we'd be shooting Obscuro and, and it'd be, oh, that's a really nice image, but it's not Obscuro. And I just delete it. it Because it doesn't fit into that universe, as you say. It doesn't fit into that voice. E even if the story is a bit like I want it, what I'm wanting to say, I, I'm going to still have to mold it and shape it, fit it in, so I'm comfortable with it uh, fitting into the series, which I pro probably is a bit crazy, but it's just the way I like to work. But. It's the process. It is your process, which it's is, process. Which is yeah. Your, yeah. You know, um, you know, there, there's so much to talk about, and one of one of the the things that's kind of in my head was, I think you had mentioned before when we were we were having a conversation about the the idea of permanence. Right. And and I think what I had posed to you was, hey, it's this is we're in the digital world now. Like, what you know, you could create a million versions of a, of a particular print. Do you do that? You know, and you had a very intriguing answer to that. Do you remember that conversation? Yes. Yes. I, well, I could, and I've, I've had this. So it, it's interesting. So, so first of all, it, it, when I when I create an image, uh, I'm shooting. Uh, I usually shoot with phase one and a half for the last 10 or 15 years. So I shoot tethered and, and I shoot like a sculptor would sculpt, you know, so I, I, I develop the image uh, a bit at a time and I might work on the position of a wrist and a, and a chin and, you know, an eye line and then I'll keep changing it. It's an iterative. And as soon as I get to a, um, an image that I think is better than, you know, the ones we've created in, you know, the last half hour or whatever, 
um, I'll, I'll go and select everything previous to this new image and delete it. And in fact, I, I love doing this in front of an intern that's visiting. So if I'm ever working with an intern from one of the schools, it's one of my favorite things to do is watch the, um, their body language when I go up and grab all these images and hit the delete button just because they're shock and horror at what I've just done. Yeah. So, so this process for me, even the, so this one that I now keep and I keep working to see if I can fine tune and make the story better, it's, you know, if I end up with a better image than that one, then I'll delete everything except for this one. And, and usually the only thing I'll keep is maybe I'll keep up uh, one or two images that are, if I can't decide, I'll, I'll keep them as a backup in case I ever have a problem with this file before I get it, even though I shoot to a RAID before I get it off-site backup done. Yeah. And I, um, however, so to answer your question, so, so first of all, I'm only after one image, uh, usually from a shoot. And it's and and it's part usually part of a series, but when I release this image in print, or at least since the book Ariel, or which is a couple of years now, I I create one print, one signed print. It's one of one, and as soon as that's sold, it'll never exist in print again. It, it might exist in a book, and it might exist in a digital form, of course, but it's only one print. So I look at I look at what I do is I'm really out to create this one piece of art, this physical piece of art. And uh, once that's printed and owned or wherever it is, it, that's it. There's only one. And and I know that really sounds batshit crazy because technically that's it's not like I'm a painter and I've only painted one. I could press the print button as many times as I want, but I, I refuse to. That's that's not what I do. It's not what I'm creating. I'm creating that's one. That's what piece I found so art. intriguing because we're in the digital age, right? And Everything is zeros and ones and, you know, things for better or for worse are driven by money, you know, and if yeah. you create a Steve Richard print that there is demand for and people want that and, you know, you know here, here's a scenario, you know, yeah. uh, uh, Elon Musk, you know, the founder of Tesla, SpaceX, you know, yeah. all these different companies says, yeah, I want a Steve Richard print in my dining room on the wall. Boom. And I know it has value because he says the only prints one. I've got one. Boom. I've got that. It's on my wall. And then let's say Bill Gates comes along and says, you know what? I, I like that print you got. I think I want that one in my living room. That would look really nice in one of my living rooms. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. And so you, in that scenario, you would say no. Would you say no? Or right. would you say? Of course, would, no, of course I'd say no. And I, actually, for me, I'd say well, get a hold of, uh, you know, your friend and see if you can buy his. Um, it, <laughs> it's, it's not it's not important to me. It, so the irony is, is, I think you nailed it right ahead. Just because the technology allows you to do something doesn't mean it's necessarily right for you to do it. And, yeah. and I think for me, the philosophy is really simple. Uh, I love the idea that I've created this one thing and there's only one of it that physically exists. And, and to me, that just, it just makes me feel right. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, uh, you know, and I will admit there's some, there's some series of, so for example, in the aerial book, there's five images that we did a Kickstarter for the book and, and we released five images of these five images. And, uh, but the rest of the, the rest of the book is, is one. And this new series we're working on myth is the same thing. It's, it's one, only one image will be printed. Um, and so it's, I, you know, maybe, maybe I have this philosophy to think in order to be an artist, you have to uh, take a vow of poverty. And, and I say that jokingly and, but also not jokingly. And what I mean by that is I, I don't want to be focused on, Oh, geez, I can sell 500 copies of this print. Now that can, you know, I, I'm really focused on creating the work. That's all that's important for me. And, 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 and I have to create a piece that really is, um, is, is part of, part of me, part of what I do. And, and what I found is I've migrated to this creating one of one is the thing that, that just, kind of solidifies it it's it's the foundation that that makes me feel really great about it and i can't foresee ever changing it now yeah yeah that, and that's the process i mean that that even even you saying those words inherently adds value to the work right because yeah. 
people that are buying it, they can hear that echoing in the work. Yeah. And like, I, this thing for some reason is heavier, <laughs> you know, it has, yeah. a, it has a weight to it that an ordinary print wouldn't, because I know that this is, I have it, you know, this is the only one of this and right. I have it. And I have the commitment from Steve Richard that this is the only one. Yep. So. Middle, well, it'll be the only one that I'll print. So, but mm -hmm. here's, here's what's interesting. I think is, um, it is you can, I mean, for me, this is this is important to have this one of one. But but it doesn't. I don't think it makes the work more or less uh, valuable in a way. Uh, the irony of you know this is this is a discussion that I that would we would go on. We could probably spend a week talking about this. But when you look at art and you look at what makes really good art, and then you look at what makes really expensive art, what makes art valuable. A lot of times they're somewhat uh, independent of each other, and mm -hmm. and I think I, I've never been. So the motivation for me wasn't making the image more valuable. Um, yeah, without question, that's wonderful. And if you can talk Bill Gates into giving me a great deal of money, I'll, I'll pick any of the remaining prints of Ariel, for example. I'd be happy to, to ship him a great big print. Yeah. But at the end of the day, that's not that's not the reason. I didn't do this to make the art more valuable. I did this to just anchor what I do. And that that's really the only reason. And if the spinoff is that the art is more valuable, great. But the marketing side is, is you know, a cloud that, that I usually just confuses me. I don't spend a lot of time in it. And, and, and I would be the worst person in the world to take marketing advice from well there might be someone <laughs> worse i'm not sure but you know maybe my cat maybe no i think my cat would probably offer better advice so um yeah I, 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 there, there's, just, some, there's some politicians <laughs> i can think of that you probably wouldn't yeah, take marketing advice, <laughs> advice from yeah <laughs> um so but i uh, for, so for me that's it's you know i i just didn't want to go down that road of marketing you know whether whether this image is worth more or less or you know because that really wasn't the motivation whatsoever yeah. but in fact and i'm not even sure you know i've had this discussion with many of my friends sell prints and they sell limited editions and we've had this you know does edition size matter and blah 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 and you know and, and it, what really matters if you're trying to make a lot of money uh, with your photography is to market it properly and, and spend a lot of time and effort and 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 hire really good people to market your product well. And yeah, and I think that's way more important than deciding whether it's a one of one or one of 10 or whatever that is, you know, that's, yeah. that's not really relevant. And it depends me. on your, you know, and everyone's motivations are different, right? So yeah. You know, like oh you said, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, well, this is, oh, sorry, oh, I was going to say this is, so this is, and maybe this is the, the cop out part, but my favorite thing about presenting and standing up in front of everybody and saying, look, I'm, I'm not really a photographer. I'm an artist and everything I say is just my opinion. So Take the pieces that make sense and throw all the rest away because there's no laws of physics. This is just, this is just me rambling on. So, um, so there's a real beauty in that is I, I can actually be a bit reckless in a way. I don't. It, it's not like I'm spouting anything that's that means anything to anybody but me and and the pieces that make sense to anybody else. So that's wonderful. But it's it's not really any truth. You know, it's not really any. Um, kind of, like I said, marketing wisdom or anything like yeah. that. It's just, just the way I look at the world. That's all. But it, but so. it, it is, it, I think it's pertinent and I think it's helpful um, because it, 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 the exercise in constraints, I think helps a lot and is a lot of, in a lot of ways liberating for a lot of people, you know, where, you know, you're, you're doing, let's say you're doing, it's a photographer and he's doing a, a model shoot. You know, and the, there's the pressure of, OK, I got to get a bunch of images and let's do 12 different poses and outfit changes. And let's bring the makeup artist on and do three different looks and, you know, indoor, outdoor, you know, wet, not wet, mud, you know, all this stuff. So that you can have a, a suite of images to sort of pick through in, in Lightroom to find the one that works versus the Steve Richard way of saying, I'm after this image. I'm after this one particular image and I'm going to obsess over getting that image to hell with everything else. I'm f focusing my magnifying glass on the piece of paper, paper to burn a hole in it right there versus heating up the whole sheet of paper. I think paper, there's, yeah. there's liberation in that, you know, ver oh, you know? Oh, I, I agree. Actually, there's a huge liberation in it. 
so, um, you know, I've come up through the, the, the normal, you know, go to a shoot, uh, you know, and take 25,000 images and, and then hope one of these worked out. And, and or actually even earlier, I'd go to a shoot and take 25,000 images and think 25,000 images are really good. <laughs> when, in fact, when none of them were any good. But, um, you know, so, I, you know, I've, I've certainly... You know, I started in 1973. Um, you, you know, I've I've I've, I've had uh, as bumpy road as anybody else, and and learned a lot of lessons, and still have a lot to to figure out. But but for me, there's and this is when I started off. When 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 I really take the approach of I, I'm not really I'm not really a photographer. I'm an artist. I'm trying to tell a story. I'm trying to create this moment that's really about me. The, the difference is um, in my process. I I allow that to uh to develop while i'm even creating the work so so for example i might start off on a shoot day and say oh i I really want this darkness i want this to be about the the inner strength i don't know i'm making shit up as i go but but maybe loss and 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 i'm gonna have it so you know you're say i might have uh, you know a, a model and i might say i'm gonna have it so you're really you're really powerful but you're looking at this empty chair as if this is um, you know, this is this is kind of a metaphor for a sense of loss, and then, and, and I'll be working on this and working on this, and we'll be doing the same thing going through the process and saying, oh, this image definitely is much better. I think what your body language would be better if we just moved your shoulder a little bit and turned the hand, so the gesture really meant something. And then the model will do something. I'll go, wait, wow, that's way better than everything we've done so far. Mm-hmm. I like what you've just. Holy shit! Now it's all about power and it's about not loss but it's about maybe your your this emptiness is your choice and i might my brain will go oh this is way better and and i just start again and the same thing the difference is i have my dogmas i know what body language and line i'm going to use i know what the lighting is going to be i know what level of anonymity all those things i don't have to stumble around with because it's part of my personal dogma but I'm not afraid to change in, you know, in mid direction to go, oh, yeah, now we're, we're going south. I knew we were going east, but now we're going south. And um, some days, you know, we, I do go north and then south and then north and then south and then right back at the starting spot and end up nowhere. Um, but usually I end up with an idea and, and uh, somewhere to start again at the next time. You know, that, but, you know what that sounds a lot like? That sounds like the, uh, the scientific method. In, in, in science, <laughs> yeah. right? It's like yeah, yeah. You, well, find, well, you, you, you test a hypothesis, yeah. and if it works, you do more of that thing, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it's true. It's it's true. Yeah, and um, except there's very little science, I think, and well, maybe there's psychology. I don't know, but <laughs> there's probably, very little yeah, science little thing, yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I'm I'm interested. I'm interested to to get your thoughts on just sort of the stigma around the the nude photography or the fine art nude photography industry on the one hand we have an influx of you know some photographers that come in with with varying motivations for taking photos of nude or scantily clad women you know some nefarious reasons some justified reasons um and then the spectrum from left to right all the way from creep all the way through you know, high end fine art photographer where you sit. So how how do you you know, reconcile the perception and the stigma around photographing the nude body for, you know, as hypocritical as it is, right? Yeah. <laughs> of photographing the nude body and keep yourself out of the bucket of those guys that, you know, we call them the GWCs, right? Guy with camera. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. how, how does that work for you? So, well, so uh, I, most of the time I just bury my head in the sand and don't think about it. But but you're right. And I started off in the conversation. It's why I, I don't even like to use the word fine art nude because it, it, it's it's true. I, I shoot fine art. I create fine art images and 99% of the time with a nude body. But if you use that definition to search out fine art nude photography, um, you, you'll end up with 90% of pictures of beautiful things. And in most cases, uh, you know, and, and, and I just think, well, that's not really my, what I do. So one of the questions, you know, it's pretty easy to weed it out and say, well, what was the, what was the intent of this shoot? Was it for the photographer, as you said, the worst case, a GWC to, to be in the room with naked women or men or whatever it is you're, you're interested in. And, 
and just so you can take photographs of them. I mean, well, I guess, yeah, that whatever, but that's, that's not even really what that, so that's on the extreme. That's not that's not even photography, right? That's not more of a fetish. It's more of a I don't know what it's it voy- is. Voyeurism, yeah. Voyeurism, yeah. So and then then there's a lot of people that so and this doesn't necessarily apply to naked bodies. It could apply to cars. It could apply to trees. It could apply to anything. And I don't mean this in a fetish sense. I mean this in a documenting beautiful subjects. So a lot of people. Uh, would find uh, nude bodies a beautiful subject and they go in and document them and that's fine as well but but there's no intent there's no self there there's no there's no there you, you haven't put yourself in this image you're not trying to say anything all you're trying to do is capture or document this and and that's a real craft and there's nothing wrong with that whether it's a girl or boy or a tree or a car but for me that's really starting to get to this definition of photography and and I, for me, I move way past that and say, no, I'm I'm not a photographer. I, I'm an artist. I like to tell stories, create moments, if you wish, uh, of um, and and to to kind of set uh, metaphors in place. And I love to do it with the human body, and uh, not unlike you know artists for you know a thousand years or more. And or more, so it's yeah. it's, not, it's not a new subject and what I do certainly isn't new. So um I'm gonna give you I, and I can't remember her name, but uh, um this is a, a bit of a story, but I, I, I used to ch- check my website stats every month and now I check it every year. But I used to check my website stats every month, and one month I got this um this huge hit from a, a blog, I think it was called Pretty in Pink. And the woman that wrote this blog was a, a model, used to be a model. And she did this, this whole blog about uh, fine art nudes. And um, I wish I could give you the link, but I don't even know what the link is. And, and um, she talked about how, it, you know, it was kind of appalling to her, for the most part, that she had modeled a great deal as a fine art nude model. And most of the time, she said, basically, it's, it's, it's just awful. It's people just taking pictures of nude girls converting them black and white and calling them fine art. And, and she had this beautiful uh, phrase that I, I, I even emailed her and said, if you don't mind, I'd like to use this in my presentations. And, and her catchphrase was, um, fine art nude is to photography what the dirty limerick is to poetry. And I thought, that says it fairly well. <laughs> <laughs> ouch. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was definitely an ouch. And, and, you know, what so, was a girl from Nantucket, from right? Nantucket, yeah. <laughs> so, and I thought, you know, that's it, it. So she was bitter, of course. And, and, and I just choose to ignore it all. I just choose to. So for example, um, you can have uh, a, a, a magazine store with a, with a FHM magazine, you know, a girl holding her breasts up, uh, you know, looking at the camera very sexually, but you can't have one of my images. And, mm-hmm. and I just think that's pretty nuts, isn't it? One's extremely sexual, and the intent is without question sexual. And then on the other side, there's just one that might have a, a nipple in it, a female nipple, because a male nipple is allowed. Um, and, and it's not allowed. For example, it's not allowed on Facebook. It's not allowed on Instagram. And um, whereas the other one would be. And I thought, well, this is a very strange world. How about I just ignore it? I'm going to just ignore it because it's not a battle you can fight and win. I can't stand up in a soapbox and say, yeah, that's wrong, you know. Give me, uh, you know, give me my freedom back. I mean, it's it's not yeah. that important. So yeah, people with buckets of money have tried, right? <laughs> well, I, well, and you know what? Look, I I'm kind of driven to do what I do. I I love what I do, and I I think what I do is it's important to me. And uh, so if it fits into certain parts of the world or it doesn't, uh, I really don't give a shit. And and it's also that's why I don't even care what it's called. But I I, I usually don't call myself. Uh, I usually don't say I shoot fine art nudes for fear someone's just going to, you know, Google that. Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, and, you know, most of the time what it brings up is, eh, you know, it depends on, you know, your point of view, but it can be pretty, pretty significantly bad. And um, so, so it's a, it's a tough question and it's probably a dialogue you could also spend a week on along with what's the price of art. Uh, you know what what makes a fine art nude what's you know what what's the definition of that and um yeah so i usually i usually just once again bury my head in the sand and don't even go there it's not worth the discussion to be honest yeah no i agree i agree yeah and focus on what's important to you and just keep drilling on that um as we as we wrap it up here steve i wanted to just 
uh, take it in the direction of education. So the, a lot of the photographers that are watching this and a lot of them that are in the, the TWIP community um, love to shoot this genre of photography um, and want to get better at it. How do, what, what are some tips from you, you know, to sort of move in the direction of even if you're already a, you're already competent at this, this art form, but you want to get excellent at it. How do, how do you move in the direction of excellence? Yeah, uh, well, two things. One, I would slow down. And uh, it's so if you walk in with a philosophy of, look, I'm going to get an idea today, not even an image. Today, I'm after an idea. And, and allow yourself to fail. So if you, give, if you could walk into any environment and say, look, I don't know everything. I know very little, in fact. So I, um, you know, I, I, I play with the, the, the Dunning-Kruger Kruger curve all the time. You know, this <laughs> brilliant psychologist that, that, you know, fully understood this, uh, this you know, the, 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 you know you, when you know a little bit about something, you totally overestimate how much you know. And yes. I've just done them an awful disservice by doing a Dunning-Kruger by, by pretending I know anything. But... Um, so uh, a lot of people um, uh, are afraid to say, look, I, I don't know very much about this, and today I just want to learn more. And that's the number one thing. And then to go in and say, look, failing is, is wonderful. I, you know, I would shoot in my studio almost every day, and most days were failures, meaning I didn't end up with this world-class image, but I ended up with an idea or I ended up discovering something that wasn't going to work but might work if I do this change. And, and I think my number one advice would be to, to walk into a shoot, let everybody know that, hey, this is a creative day. Even if you've hired a model and hired a studio and say, look, I, I, it's not important that I create this image today. What's important is I, I, I create the ability to learn something, to discover something, to maybe, and, and the irony is probably that has more potential for you to create an exceptional image than any other way, because now you're open, you're, you're not closed and, and, and uh, fighting any creativity. So that's number one. The number two thing I think would be, you know, take, take some workshops or lessons from people that I think get the concept. So from artists, um, and in fact, um, I recommend, you know, my inspiration is very rarely comes from photographers. It comes from artists. It comes from Caravaggio. It comes from the Pre-Raphaelites. It, it comes from, you know, Frederick J. Watts, it, 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 or, for, for, sorry, not for, Frederick Watts. It comes from um, Herbert Draper. It comes from, you know, artists that, that are totally about telling their story or their stories, and, and I find that a much better place for inspiration. So I think those things, and then if, if you really kind of want to work in the fine art nude genre and you don't know how to work with models that much, hire a model that's, that's really a good fine art model and tell them you haven't got a clue and pay them to help you communicate, pay them to maybe um, you know, come up with a story and work together to say, how would we create this story without you posing and me just pushing 12 frames a second, um, what I call monkey mode, uh, and, and having that, you know, be the, be the, the thing. In fact, uh, I, I'll, maybe I'll end with this story, but sometimes when I teach workshops, that's, in fact, I would go up to the model firsthand and I would say every time the flash goes off I want you to rock this beautiful pose just do your stuff and I would set the camera to do automatic at one frame a second or whatever and I but I looked like I was controlling I'm going yeah oh beautiful and everybody in the, you know the, would be watching them all looking at the screen and I would keep saying yeah and, and then I would literally walk away from the camera and keep saying yeah and eventually I just could walk out of the room and and, every, and after a while, people would start to notice I wasn't even at the camera. And and it's funny because you'd come back and look at the images on the screen, and they'd all be uh, pictures of a beautiful girl posing. And and I would say, what did I have to do with this? Like, was there any intent here? Does this have anything to do with me? And of course, it it didn't. Any the camera did all the decisions. The model did all the work. Um, so, and, and I always find it really funny if, if you're going to be a fine art nude photographer, if you use that term, you go book a model, you book a studio and you're, all you're going to do is push the button. Well, why wouldn't you just go have a coffee and, and take that out of the equation? Right. right. So, um, 
So I think the approach for me would be to, to, to work with people who do get the concept, if that's what you're interested in, and, 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 and let yourself be wrong for a while. It's okay. Let, let people explain to you and let learn a bit and fail a bit. And, and, and it's okay to walk out of a shoot with no exceptional images, just maybe some ideas. That's, yeah. that's totally it- fine. Is it is it better uh, or you know maybe it depends is the answer but is it is it better to to go to a workshop that has you know half a dozen photographers shooting a model with an instructor or is it better you know from a learning perspective for the photographer to say you know what it follow Steve's advice I'm going to go find uh, an experienced fine art nude model and work with her one on one to collaborate on a story or, or is it both? Does it have to be an, an or? Can it be an and? I, uh, yeah, it maybe can. So for me, it, it can't. So I, I and I don't want to look. I'm not p- pissing on anybody's photography workshops. That um, that's not my intent whatsoever. I'm just gonna. I'll tell you what I feel is mm-hmm. is not a good workshop. And so if if walking in with 15 people all taking pictures of the same model posing and all you're and you're not directing. Right, and you're and you're not tuning and and controlling. But if all you're doing is sitting there with everybody else and taking the picture, I'm not sure what how much you're learning. I think that just becomes an experience, and that might be that if that's what you're interested in, that's fine. So if you're interested in that photography experience, and and if that makes you comfortable, and if this is your first time working with, for example, a new female model, and and this makes you comfortable where you wouldn't have been before, well, great. Then it has an advantage, but. I don't think, in my opinion, you're going to learn very much compared to um, working almost one-on-one with a, with a, with a photographer. And, and for example, and I'm not trying to promote my workshops over anybody else's workshops or my philosophy, but I guess you did ask me the question, so I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah. My philosophy in a workshop is, is I won't take any more than six people, and I only let one person shoot at a time. And and. And that way we all get to kind of listen. And when they have a question, I, when I'm explaining to them, I'm also explaining it to everybody else. And, and a lot of times the person will either ask a question or they'll do something that no one else would have thought to ask and not even myself would have thought about it. And, and everybody gets to learn something really important. Um, but for me, I wouldn't do it any other way. And in fact, uh, I'm starting to, so this is going to, this is going to sound really batshit crazy. Um, I've even got to the point of trying to get it down to four people in a, in a particular workshop shop, except the, the, the economics are brutal at that point. But uh, other than there's a workshop we've already uh, booked in Montreal, any workshop after this, I'm not even going to let anybody keep images. So you come to the workshop, we take images maybe on just camera, but if you're there to get portfolio images, you're there totally for the wrong reason. It's not, that's not, that. that's not why you're here. That so is... yeah, everything would have to be deleted. Um, and I would maybe send out some images for reference, uh, with notes on them. But, but if, if you're there, if you're at a workshop to, um, to get portfolio images, then I think you're there for the wrong reason. That's not a workshop anymore. That's a photo greedy or a, you know, a shoot event and, 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 and why are they even portfolio images? They're, they're not really your image. You push the button. But, <laughs> right. Um, so, um, but you, you know, so, so, uh, yeah, so that's kind of my philosophy, uh, but I am not trying to shit on anybody else's teaching. That's, that's not my intent whatsoever. This is just the way I look at the world. Take the pieces that make sense to you. I love it. I love it. And we'll end it. We'll end it right there. Steve Richard, thank you for taking the time to do this. Always a pleasure. And now people that have watched this video understand why I'm haunted by Steve Richard. (laughs) Just just flick him off. He's right there. He won't let go. He won't (laughs) let go. He's holding on right there. Uh, Well, Steve, uh, I've got your URL up on the screen right here. Is that the best place for for folks to go? It's probably the only place. Yeah. I was going to say for the folks that are listening to the audio version, it's, it's Steve Richard or Steve Richard, Richard Steve Richard.com. Yeah. Right. That's right. Yeah. I, I do have a Facebook page that I, uh, I update, uh, really rarely, uh, like for example, I'm presenting at PhotoCon Hawaii in a, in a couple of weeks and well, presenting on my, out of my living room, 
too photocon photocon Hawaii <laughs> thanks to COVID. But but um, so I'll do that on Facebook. But I I, I never post images on Facebook because they're not allowed. So I, I and I refuse to to censor them. So I won't post her. But so for me, the the only social media I don't have Twitter or. I don't even know what they, they are now. Um, old man, get off my lawn syndrome. But if, <laughs> if basically um, uh, you, the website's the, really the only place, if you want to contact me, there's a contact there. There's some behind the scenes videos if you're interested to see the processes. And and I'm, and I'm, I'm a, it might take me a day or two to get back to people, but I get back to everybody. Anybody who sends me an email, I'm happy to, to, uh, to show it back. Fantastic. All right, Steve Richard. Thank you for, for taking the time to do this. My and, pleasure. And yeah. Frederick, thanks so much for inviting me. It's it's always awesome to talk to you. I look forward to the next time. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll definitely do it again. Like you said, we have lots to talk about. We could do a whole episode just on, you know, the the whole nude fine art, you know, controversy. Yeah. We, we have a million things for us to talk about. So. Sounds, um, sounds good. Okay. You have, a, you have a great rest of your week and be safe up there. You too. Take care. Okay. All right. See okay. Bye bye. This is Twitter.